please be seated. Good morning again and welcome. We welcome those of you who are here with us at the Sylvan Community Center. We welcome those of you who are viewing us on Facebook live stream and also on Zoom. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm the Reverend Carla Commeter and with me today is our guest musician, Melissa Olson. So we share today's daily word. And today is Sunday, July, nope, wrong page. I did read it yesterday. Sunday, July 24th, 2022. And the word for today is loving. I am a caring, loving presence. Just as the sun shines on everyone and everything, I am a loving presence to everyone I meet. My kind words, welcoming smile, and compassionate actions all spring from the love that is part of my divine identity. Being a loving presence draws me closer to God and to all people. I want to share the love I have known throughout the seasons of my life, at the heights of triumphs and joy, and the depths of loss and suffering. God is love, and so am I. No matter who I meet or what they're going through, I am loving. I bring support, kindness, solace, and comfort and share them lavishly without thought of reciprocity. I am the hands and heart of God in the world. And from Romans 13, 8, we read, Owe oh, no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves has fulfilled the law. And the word for today is loving. And I do want to add a comment on that. It's not always easy, no. And I, I see that today's daily word could make some people feel guilty or like they aren't meeting a standard they should be meeting and just know that that's okay. We are where we are. We have our goals, we have our dreams and we will grow into them. In the meantime, you are enough just as you are, and so it is, amen. And now we're going to welcome Melissa to lead us in a song, One Great Power.
modified order of service today. We often have uh, what we've called a featurette early in the service, and, and then a meditation, and then a talk later. Today, we're going to do an extended meditation, and we're not going to have a featurette. And this is all going to flow in this manner. We are going to bless our prayer requests. Then we're going to invite Melissa to sing a solo, which will serve as a call to prayer and lead us into the meditation. Then we're going to spend more time in meditation than we normally do. And one of the reasons for this is we have a monthly meditation, the, we call it the First Friday Meditation, and it is superb. And you can't do meditation justice in the five minutes we give it, usually, on Sunday. So we're going to make it longer now, and we're going to give us ourselves time to really relax and really enter the silence. So that's the plan. Don't be surprised. And it begins with blessing our prayer requests. We have in the lobby a box where you can write a prayer request and leave it, and our prayer chaplains will pray over it and then submit it to Silent Unity. And in this day of online church, know that you can email us a prayer request or you can contact Silent Unity yourself in many different ways. We have this information for your convenience and how you contact Silent Unity and our email address. Remember that the unity movement was founded on prayer. The unity movement was founded on spiritual healing and it is very powerful in that way. And when we pray over the prayer requests, we imagine each person enfolded in a brilliant inner radiance that dissolves all obstacles and bestows upon them a calm peace. And we envision them becoming receptive to their intuitive guidance and empowered to act upon it. And then we release it. And as we release each one to their indwelling power, we affirm they are free to discover and claim wholeness, peace, and prosperity. And so it is. Amen. And now, Melissa.
And so we invite you to become comfortable. Whatever that means to you, however you want to sit, wherever you want to place your hands and feet. I often like to pull up another chair and use it as a footstool. And if you are at home, we invite you to lie down if you want. Use the soft, cushy blankie and, and pillow. And then we progress into a, a greater degree of relaxation. Begin by deepening your breathing. And exhale all that troubles you. And inhale the love of God. And then focus on your feet as you suggest to them that they relax. Allow your feet to relax. Just let go. There's nowhere you need to stand on and nowhere you need to walk to right now. Uncurl your toes. And allow that wave of relaxation to move through those feet, through your ankles, up your calves to your knees. And envision that wave flowing, flowing upward through your calves as you suggest they relax. And into your knees, healing your knees. So many of us need our knees to have a healing. And then see that wave moving ever higher through your thighs and into your hips. And bless those sturdy thighs, that strong thigh bone, strongest in your body. And allow it to relax, allow your, your hips to relax. Bless them, all the cartilage and tendons that Enable them to do their miraculous work as they rotate in their joint. If there's any discomfort in your hips, send your breath to them and allow it to be released as you exhale. And now, picturing that your legs from your toes to your hips are filled with light. Allow that light to rise through your lower back and your lower belly. And take a moment to specifically relax your lower back. We hold a lot of tension there. And relax your belly, soften it like the Buddha, for you are safe here. And you need nothing to defend yourself from. And as that wave of relaxation rises through your upper back and your chest, filling you with light, you allow your vertebrae to stack and balance. You drop your shoulders. Allow the relaxation to flow down your arms, into your hands and fingers. And then back up to your neck and the back of your head where we 
holds so much tension specifically, say, relax. Relax your jaw and your tongue and your eyes and your scalp until you see yourself as the being of light, which you truly are, which truly resides within your human decided disguise. And breathe again. We have chosen this summer to have a flexible series based on soul questions. We're going to consider a few of them during today's meditation. And the first two are, what is missing from my life? What is missing from my life? What would bring me more joy? What would make my life easier? And the second one is, what do I need to let go of? These two questions can be related to each other. What is missing from my life? What do I need to take in? And what do I need to let go of? So we'll spend a few minutes in the silence as you allow yourself to be open to the answers, to the guidance from your inner selves to these soul questions. And as we move along, consider this. What's one affirmation I can live by, which my future self will thank me for? What could become the motto for my life, my affirmation? Here are a few examples, and you are certainly free to Select your own from this list or not from this list. I never walk alone. I am immersed in God's love and God's power. I am guided to right answers and good choices. I can trust myself. Life loves me. I am supported in all I do. All is well. Joy is my mantra. I choose joy. And it is safe to love. It is safe to love. And as we enter this silence again, allow your inner guidance to show you a mantra or an affirmation you can use throughout your days.
And then our final soul question. What is the new story of your life? What is the new story of your life? The one that's starting to unfold now. The one that feels most alive and vital. So we allow the answer to that question to appear within our holy minds. Now we take a few moments to return to this time and this place as we wiggle our toes and breathe deeply, become aware of our bodies, become aware of this one human lifetime we're focused on right now. And know that all is well, all is always well. Thus ends the meditation, now and forevermore. Amen.
the Joe Harry window. It looks like it's an esoteric name, doesn't it? Uh huh. It's named after Joe and Harry. Seriously, we'll get to that in a minute. We know that unity is metaphysical Christianity. And the simple explanation of what is metaphysics is the study of something beyond the physical. But it truly had its start with Plato back in the fourth century BCE. Metaphysics is a combination of three other studies in Greek philosophy. And they are ontology, cosmology, and epistemology. You know, it really helps that I had a brother who majored in philosophy. And we used to sit in my mother's basement um, imbibing of certain substances and listening to Sills and Crofts, and my brother would explain. I didn't know what epistemology was since I was 20 years old. <laughs> OK, ontology is the study of being. What am I? What is God? You know, when Moses asks God what his name was, God says, I am what I am. It is at the heart of every school of philosophy. Every one of them starts with ontology. Because if you don't know what you are, there is no sense in going any further. Because everything else would be based on a faulty foundation. The second uh, study that is in metaphysics is cosmology. That's time and space, the universe. We, we, we cover these. We cover these all the time. We don't call them maybe by these names, but we're always talking about the nature of consciousness, and, and I'll have featurettes on astronomy. And okay, the third part is epistemology, which is the study of how we know things. How do you know that's true? How do you know things? And today's talk, fits in that category. It's about what we know. The Joe Harry window is not deep Greek philosophy, but it still fits into epistemology. The Joe Harry window was developed by American psychologists Joseph Luft and Harry Ingham in the 1950s, and they, they called their model Joe Harry by combining their first names. It can be, and most commonly, is applied to group communication. If you Google this, you're going to find a different explanation from what we're covering today, because we are focusing on a different application of the Joe Harry window. When you apply it the way we do, it is for individual awareness and personal growth. And I learned this way in ministerial school. Okay. The four quadrants in this graphic have labels commonly used when you're applying the Joe Harry window to interpersonal communication, the open self, the blind self, the hidden self, the unknown self. And we're not going to use those labels today. But you needed to know that they are commonly used. And those same four quadrants are identified by these questions. The first one, and I've got it up there, but fear not, I've got another screen with them bigger. Okay. The upper left quadrant, what do you know that you know you know? Then the upper right quadrant. What do you know that you don't know you know? The bottom left. What don't you know that you know you don't know? <laughs> and the bottom right, and this, is, this one's my favorite. What don't you know that you don't know you know? You don't know you don't know. <laughs> and perhaps it's easier to see these questions in this list form in this bigger font. So we'll be working with them like this today. And we're going to take them one at a time. 
The first one. What do you know that you know you know? I know that the sun will come up tomorrow. Only it really doesn't. The sea is spinning, so yeah, it's just kind of a, a fallacy. But that's a shot over the Mississippi River. Isn't that beautiful? So the things that you know you know can be mundane. They can be mystical or spiritual. There's a lot of things that you know you know. What do you know that you don't know you know? Now, this one is fascinating. I love the game show Jeopardy. I watch it every day. I'm very good at it. If I watch it with other people, I try to keep my mouth shut so I don't seem like a show off because I know a lot of things. And I know a lot of things that I didn't know I knew. And they'll ask some question, and this answer will come floating up out of the cloud. We're going to talk about the cloud. And I will absolutely know that's the answer to the question. I may not know another thing about that topic. The only thing I know is that's the right answer to that question. So this was something that I knew that, that I, what do you know that you don't know you know? I didn't know that I knew that. Where did that come from? We talk about the cloud. We talk about the cloud. Apple talks about the cloud and, and technology, and it's a big network of supercomputers. But in the metaphysical, spiritual, mystical realm, the cloud is more like an energy cloud. It's a cloud of consciousness. And I personally believe that information is not stored in our brains. I believe information is stored in the cloud. I have a, uh, I had a career in computers before I gave it all up for God. And um, the brain is like the central processing unit, the CPU. It has the operating system. It runs certain programs and applications and it has the ability to store and retrieve data. But the data is not kept in the CPU. It's kept offline storage. It's kept in the cloud. And I actually use these images when I want an answer to something. I'll put out a retrieval request. Go get me the answer to that. And before I know it, it'll just come chirping in like a little bird and pop into my head. So I believe that our brains are retrieval devices and that the information's in the cloud. So what do you know that you don't know you know? Well, there's all kinds of things in the cloud that I don't know that I, that I know until I need them, until they ask that question on Jeopardy. <laughs> okay. The fourth quadrant, we're back to Greece here. What don't you know that you know you don't know? Have you heard of that expression, it's all Greek to me? Well, people say that when they don't understand something, when they don't know, it's all Greek to me. Just like the, the mystery of the Greek alphabet. I, I know I don't know Greek. I do not know the Greek language. So there are a lot of things on, on this mundane level that we know we don't know. I don't know how to build a spaceship. Um, I don't know how to play the clarinet. Yeah, I know I don't know these things. And then my favorite quadrant of all. What don't you know that you don't know you know? And I have been waiting for months to share these following ideas with you. And this talk is where they fit in. Do you see those symbols there? Is there anybody here that's Jewish? Mm. Is there anybody here that knows what those symbols are? Do you know that you have seen these symbols probably every day of your lives? Every single day of your lives. These are the symbols on food packages that say it's kosher or not. 
and they are always there. This is, I brought these pita chips today because we've got some hummus for our refreshments. And right here is a K in a circle and a little D by it. And that means these are kosher, but they've got dairy in them. If you're not familiar with the, the kosher diet, you cannot mix meat and dairy. So you need to know for each item, would it be meat or would it be dairy? Or there's another word, pareva, and it's probably not pronounced that, which means it's neither meat nor dairy and can be mixed with either. When you look at this assortment here with the U and the circle and the K and the triangle and the K and the star, there are different agencies that certify foods to be kosher and they each have, it's kind of like branding their cattle, they each have their own little symbol. But those all mean this is kosher. This on the right was from a specific package and the U in the circle means it's kosher. The pareva means it's neither meat nor dairy. And the P means it's kosher for Passover, which means it doesn't have leavening in it either. These have been on your cereal boxes on the kitchen table every mom went, morning when your mom poured that bowl of cornflakes for you. They have always been there. And you never noticed them. And you did not know what they meant. These were things you did not know that you did not know. <laughs> now, this has a deeper significance because it's about our perception. What else are we seeing every day that we don't recognize, that we don't understand, that we don't know that we don't know? And if we did know, how would it change our lives? Another aspect of this quadrant and symbols like this is they tend to apply to select groups of people. You know, athletics, uh, athletes have their own jargon. Kosher food has its own requirements. And so those select groups of people would recognize them because they had meaning to them. Whereas if we weren't in one of those groups, it's like, we just skim over it, skim over it. The pistachios on the table today have these symbols on them, I checked. They're everywhere. What else is everywhere? Okay, now here comes the best part of this talk. Back to our list of four questions. We have used assorted mundane examples for each of these quadrants. And yet, you can apply this whole model to deeper, more transformational material and aspects of your life. And I'm going to share how it worked for me. When I was 52 years old, I was diagnosed with attention deficit disorder. And it happened like this. I was ordained when I was 50, two years before that. And there were things in ministerial school which were a struggle for me, things that should not have been that much of a struggle considering how easy many things are for me. Two examples were I couldn't pay attention to the textbooks. They did not hold my interest and I could not read them and procrastination, oh man, still is a problem, not as much, but procrastination, and it, it made things so hard, it made a struggle for me, and it hurt the quality of my work. If you put everything off to the last minute, then you will turn a product uh, that is good enough, but it's not your best, you know? So, I got ordained, I was 50, and I thought, I can't keep on like this. This is not good enough, and it's too hard. So I prayed, and my prayer went like this. God, oh God, something's wrong. 
<laughs> Something's wrong and I need to know what it is because I can't go any further until I do. I could not take a church until I knew why I struggled with these things. So in this example, I'm moving from quadrant to quadrant. We start out that I did not know what I did not know. I did not know I had ADD, and I did not know that I did not know I had ADD, and that it had colored my entire life. Then, when I had this struggle and I asked for an answer, it moved me into the quadrant that says, what don't you know that you know you don't know? I knew there was something going on. I didn't know what it was. And I needed to know what it was. And that was what my prayer was. There was something going on, and I don't know what it is, but I need to know what it is. After I used that prayer, many different clues were provided, and that's a material for one of my autobiographies in my awakening to the knowledge that I had ADD. But I think what really clinched it was when my mother called me up. My mother's still alive, she's 92 years old. My mother called me up and said that she thought she had ADD and that I had it too. And then she gave me a website that had a self quiz and it was specifically for women. So it dealt with things that would be part of a woman's life. Like, do you have a problem getting your laundry all the way done, including folding the clothes and putting back in the drawers? I live out of my baskets. How did they know that? Things like that. And that gave me the insight to get a medical diagnosis. And sure enough, it was ADD. And I want you to know that the medication helps a lot. It does. This was a huge awakening and turning point in my life. All right, back to epistemology. The study of how we know what we know is but one part of the field of metaphysics. And Joe Harry's window is but one example of a way to analyze what we know. But perhaps the most important part of today's talk is answered prayer. Regardless of what challenge you may be facing, regardless of what question you might have, ask and it shall be answered unto you. We never walk alone. We are immersed in God's love and God's guidance. We have within us everything needed to solve any problem, whether individually or globally. And remembering these big T truths, we know that all is well. And thus ends the lesson. God bless you.
last time. Thank you for coming back. Thank you for being here. So we take a moment now for our love offering. And on the, the slide is to all the information you need to donate in however is convenient for you. I have, you're here in person. We're going to be passing a bag. You can use check or cash. But there are ways you can use PayPal on our, our website or in the newsletter. And know that we are self-supporting through our own contributions. That's an old AA term. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. We are the church. Those of us who come together are the reason the church is here and survives. So we thank you, and we bless you, and we're grateful for you. So let's take a moment to bless our love offerings with Unity's Prosperity Prayer. Okay, you gotta get them all charged up now. Ready? Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I choose to give, and all that I am open to receive. And so it is. Amen. We have a few announcements this morning. Next week, we're going to be on Zoom. And Sky Nelson Isaacs, who has been a guest speaker and musician several times, is going to be speaking on music harmony, synchronicity, and the multiverse. Sounds fascinating. It'll be at 10 a.m. on Zoom. He's going to be speaking and doing the music which leads me to another discussion. Most of you know I was scheduled for surgery to have a lumpectomy. And we, <laughs> would you believe they had scheduled it on the last day before the surgeon went on maternity leave? Well, earlier that same day, her baby decided to come. They called me at home two hours before I was supposed to be at the hospital saying we can't do it. <laughs> And so they rescheduled it for Wednesday, August the 3rd. And that gave me the opportunity to be with you today. I don't know when I will be with you again. It just depends on how things go. We are going to be very creative in how we handle Sunday mornings and how we pay for what it takes to get guest speakers and guest musicians in. So stay tuned for information on all of that. But I have an idea that this is going to be a gift, that there will be things we learn about and things that we do. And well, like Lisa did a sound healing service a couple of weeks ago. That was our Sunday service. It was fabulous. And I'm, I'm encouraged to step out a little bit, like doing the extended meditation today. And I just think it's a wonderful thing for us uh, to have this opportunity. I also want you to know that I'm very open to questions about my health anytime you have a question about it. Then today, as always, we will have an in-person stay and chat here at the community center. And we have got Turkish coffee and Turkish tea. If you want tea, I brought in a, a Pyrex two cup measuring cup that you can nuke some water in in the microwave and make some Turkish tea. That Turkish coffee, I've just been guzzling it down during the service, it's delish. Uh, the, the ladies who made it, kudos, thank you, it's wonderful. And uh, some other goodies at the table. So please, if you have time, stay, and, and we'll have a time of fellowship. So now, we're gonna invite Melissa to lead us in the peace zone. We please rise.
Our prayer for protection, we know that the light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. God bless you all. Have a wonderful week.